Look, World of Warcraft players, I know WoW came out in 2004 and maybe, even rightfully so, you warriors want to keep the ear all for yourself. But we cannot ignore the fact that in 2004, Shrek 2 came out? Well, sure, but also, Motorola Razor hit the shelves? Yeah, and that's an open wound for me because I've wanted it so bad forever and never got it, but that's not why we're here today. In 2004? Wait, Beyonce won five Grammys for Dangerously in Love? Slay! Okay, alright, I guess 2004 was a big year for all of us. Nerds, pop girlies, baby millennials, and everyone else who can remember where they were and what they were doing when they started watching The Simple Life. But for the purpose of our video today, we have to talk about what happened on September the 14th when the so-awaited sequel to the one and only live simulation titled The Sims was released. Hello The Sims 2, you're turning 20 today. And if you were celebrating here in Europe, well, we would get you so drunk, cause 20 is a big, big deal. But also, thank you for changing our life. Yours forever, millennials and Gen Xers who have been needing therapy since 2004, but only started getting it 20 years later. Hello, honey pie. Welcome to the drama house. If this isn't the first time you're stopping by, well, Welcome back, baby! My name is Lady Drama and I'm so happy to have you here to celebrate such an important 20 years anniversary. In today's video, we will travel back in time, because you know we love to do that here at the Drama House. Back to 2004 to reminisce about the atmosphere that welcomed the arrival of The Sims 2 to the world. We will talk about how this game was such an innovation in its genre, why it became so so successful and why we're still talking about it today, 20 years later. Is it nostalgia or is The Sims 2 something really special? But before we open the door to the chaos and the details you may have forgotten, don't miss the chance to join me here at the Drama House by hitting that subscribe button. The first, one and only The Sims game ended its successful and groundbreaking run after receiving seven expansion packs, the last being Making Magic in October 2003. If you weren't around in 2003, or if simply The Sims wasn't really your thing back then, I feel it's important to highlight how big the title was. The Sims received universal acclaim according to review aggregator Metacritic, which assigned the game a score of 92%. The game received praise for its open-ended gameplay, allowing players to choose their own goals and objectives, as well as its sound design, crisp graphics, and humor. According to this recollection I found on Quora from game designer legend Mike Sellers, on a pre-release stage for The Sims 1, there was a lot of question about what the game actually was. Initially, they tried to market it to early audiences as a sort of Tamagotchi on steroids, <laughs> as you had to take care for your Sims or they would be unhappy, not want to go to work, etc. What they quickly realized, though, is that people almost instantly started telling stories about The Sims, even to themselves. As if, in a way, to make sense of what they were doing, or maybe just because telling stories is what we as humans do. So, the team shifted their marketing approach back towards being something of a dollhouse simulator, without, I think, ever saying those words publicly, where people could tell their own stories. And the chaotic dollhouse simulator was indeed a huge success, with 11.5 million copies sold. Sure, The Sims was successful and ambitious, and it did get some room to improve on the initial concept by receiving important expansion packs such as Hot Date, Vacation, Unleashed, 
but there were some systematic limitations Maxis wanted to get rid of. So by the Sims' third birthday in 2003, the team behind the game led by The Sims creator Will Wright had been working on a sequel for a while. Actually, they had been working on The Sims 2 since The Sims 1 came out. A mainline sequel to The Sims began early development with a small research team consisting of from 5 to 20 people already in early 2000, and later in that year, development for The Sims 2 fully started. The game started transitioning to third graphics in late 2001, and by mid-2002, the build and buy tools were completed. In May 2003, gameplay of The Sims 2 was shown to the public at E3 2003 with the release date of Spring 2004. This sad release date won't be completely achieved as by January 2004, the team decides to delay the arrival of The Sims 2 in order to have more time to polish the game and fix additional bugs. The new release date was announced officially during the E3 event in May 2004, together with some gameplay demo and a new logo for the game. The focus is clear and the game looks promising with such an updated, cool and even more chaotic vibe than what players were used to seeing in The Sims. The game graphics are groundbreaking with the new camera, with different angles as well as third graphics that give Sims and the environment they live in a whole new look. The purpose? People knew it already, but it seemed that now, with The Sims 2, the idea of having ownership of your storytelling got supersized. But also, this showcase of the new sequel gave fans a glimpse to another feature they weren't familiar with. Aspirations. Fortune, knowledge, romance, fame, family. The sandbox remained, but it was now more… driven? More challenging? We were about to find out as in August 2004, The Sims 2 went gold, ending development and having copies sent to the press and reviewers. And a month later, it was ready to hit the shelves. The Sims 2 was released for Microsoft Windows on December the 14th, 2004, and a port for Mac OS by Aspire was released on June the 17th, 2005. The first standard edition was priced at approximately $49.99 in the United States, and it shipped with toddlers and pools, unlike The Sims 4. Yeah, that's shade, honey. <laughs> I couldn't hold myself. Upon launch, the base game did feel different from the first title in many different ways. The graphics and gameplay possibilities were showcased right away, with the game iconic intro that played every time you double-clicked The Sims 2 icon on your screen. But what were the key features that differed so much from The Sims 2 predecessor? Aging and generational gameplay in The Sims 1, Sims didn't age. Babies grew into children, but children, adults and elders all remained the same. The Sims 2 introduced an aging system where Sims naturally aged from baby, toddler, child, teen, adult and elder. This allowed for generational gameplay, family legacies and a more dynamic life experience. 3D graphics and camera control well, The Sims 1 used isometric 2D graphics with pre-rendered character models and limited zoom and rotation capabilities, The Sims 2 featured fully 3D environments and characters, giving players the ability to rotate and zoom in and out at any angle. This was a huge leap forward in visual realism and player immersion. Aspiration and Fear System the management level on The Sims 1 focused primarily on keeping Sims' needs 
hunger, energy, social, in balance with no long-term goals or aspirations. But for The Sims 2, we had an aspiration system where Sims had personal life goals, for instance, family, fortune, romance. Sims also had fears which negatively affected their mood if realized and wants that increased their happiness in life if satisfied. This created more depth in gameplay and personalized experiences for each sim. Genetics and Inheritance There was no genetic system in The Sims and children didn't inherit traits or appearances from their parents. That's why a big introduction from The Sims 2 was the genetic system where offspring inherited physical traits, for example, eye color, hair color, as well as personality traits, making family lines way more realistic. Memory and Life Event System the passing of time and the achievement of milestones was limited in The Sims 1, as Sims had no long-term memory. They didn't retain or recall past events. A big shift for The Sims 2 was the development of memories of significant life events such as birthdays, death, marriages, job promotions, etc. These memories influence Sims' behavior and emotional state, adding continuity and depth to their stories. Needless to say, The Sims 2 was critically acclaimed and it has been cited as one of the greatest video games ever made. It was also a commercial success, selling 1 million copies in its first 10 days, a record at the time. It contributed to The Sims series reaching 100 million copies in April 2008. By March 2012, the game had sold 13 million copies over all platforms with over 6 million PC copies, making it one of the best-selling PC games of all time. The base game, The Sims 2, will be followed by 8 expansion packs, with Apartment Life being the last one of the bunch, released in 2008. During The Sims 2 life cycle, we also got to know a new type of pack called Stuff Packs. Stuff Packs are add-ons that intend to add new items, usually in the amount of 60, to the base game. The Sims 2 Holiday Party Pack served as the pilot release for this line of products. After the success of the pilot release, EA launched the line with The Sims 2 Family Fun Stuff. The Sims 2 Mansion and Garden Stuff is the 10th and final stuff pack for The Sims 2. Before The Sims 2 was even released, players were eager to know more from Maxis about the lore of the game. The first Sims game introduced iconic characters to the franchise, such as the Newbie family and the Goth family, and their presence was expected in the second chapter as well. However, I don't think people were expecting the quality and quantity of lore and world drama The Sims 2 would introduce us to. I know one of the main acclaimed changes from The Sims 1 to The Sims 2 is the improved graphics and rich gameplay, but from my experience, I believe the team did an excellent job to create the environment the game plays out in. The base game shipped with three different neighborhoods, each one of them being extra story-driven. The so-awaited and beloved and iconic Bella Goth is the protagonist of a mystery that spans between Pleasant View and Strange Town, involving aliens as well as several other households from these new worlds. The base game also included a full legacy drama inspired by Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, but also families made of potential serial killers, chaotic couple problems, family feuds, and complicated parents-offspring dynamics. The layered storytelling all these pre-made households offered in the base game was a rich source of inspiration and a showcase of what the game was capable of. 
but at the same time it was an incredibly efficient way to create realism and make you believe that the hypothetical family you were creating and moving in was actually arriving to this new place full of its own already established drama, rumors and issues. The Sims 2 took the existing lore from the first game and gave it a huge spin, expanding it to all different levels thanks to the power of storytelling and the creativity of the people behind the game. The stories we've learned about or even experienced by playing with those households in The Sims 2 became the foundation of the timeline that will exist even later in The Sims 3, which, in a very smart way, will be set around 20 years before the events we see in The Sims 2. And if you think about iconography from The Sims franchise as a whole, the majority of images you think of are probably coming from The Sims 2 environment. First, of course, Belagoth. Then, all the shenanigans that involve aliens, Don Lothario, the green baby bottles, the cow plant, which belongs to The Sims 2 first expansion pack, University Life, the social bunny that appeared whenever Sims needs were too low, I could go on for a while here, but you see what I mean, right? You know, sometimes I find myself in comments, threads, <laughs> in the Sims community where players complain about the current status of The Sims 4 and other players respond with answers like, well, then go back to play The Sims 2 and see how that old thing does. I always feel people use this argument to imply older titles like The Sims 2 or even The Sims 3 haven't aged very gracefully. However, your honor, I respectfully disagree. Unfortunately, EA isn't directly selling any The Sims 2 game or expansion on their platform anymore, and the game is now only available on platforms where you can purchase used video games. But if you're lucky enough to own a copy of the game, or you're a pirate who likes to sail the seven seas, it won't take long for you to experience how gracefully the game has actually aged. I still play The Sims 2 today and apart from some limitations by design which have everything to do with the game's age, for me the gameplay is as good as the first time I launched it on my Windows XP. The Sims 2 Sims still feel incredibly lively and the gameplay is quirky in a good way. The depth of the storytelling is the key element as it performs so well regardless of whether you decide to play with the family you create or with an existing one. I don't think I've ever played with a pre-made household in The Sims 4, but in The Sims 2 I find it as entertaining as making one in Create a Sim. When you jump into an existing household, it really feels like you're walking into a realistic life where things have happened or will happen impacting what will happen next. Sure, the graphics of the game are 20 years old, just like some other mechanics and even styles, clothing, objects, but when the gameplay is so good, I don't really care about outdated phones or computers being my only option in the game. So, here we are, my lovely drama queens. It's 2024 and those The Sims 2 days seem so far away, yet sometimes so recent. At the beginning of this video we were asking ourselves if the grandiosity of The Sims 2 is just a product of nostalgia or if the game is to be rightfully considered a groundbreaking title. My take after traveling back in time to the pre-release and base game release days is that it's undeniable that The Sims 2 represented a big success for the franchise, both because of its innovations and because of the care and passion that went into expanding the power of the first title to 
a new technology. I believe that nostalgia plays a part whenever you talk to someone who got to experience The Sims 2 when it came out, but rather than a bias created by the sadness for the passing of time, it's because playing it back then really felt like a mind-blowing experience. It gave more things to do, it made certain aspects of the first game easier and others more elaborated. It represented the context in which it was created, the raunchiness of the early 2000s, without losing the chaotic and silly The Sims style. The game mechanics still hold up today and if you decide to give it a try without having experienced it before, I believe you'll find yourself sucked in for some good hours without even noticing. The Sims 2 really had the team taking the leap and aiming higher while having the correct mindset on what it was that made The Sims 1 so successful. At the same time, the Sims 2 brought certain elements that became synonym of the entire franchise still today, 20 years later. And for that, I am so thankful. To me, The Sims 2 was the very first experience with The Sims franchise. I remember seeing it in a video games magazine, feeling very intrigued, especially by its dollhouse element, but also by how cool the characters looked. Then, once I got my hands on the base game and started playing, I just couldn't believe this game even existed because somehow it checked all the boxes of what I really wanted out of my gaming experience. I remember spending days at school daydreaming about what the generation of sims I had going on would do next and just counting the minutes until I could play again. Maybe this sounds similar to your experience or maybe you got to discover The Sims 2 in a different way. Either way, I would love to hear more about it in the comment section below, so don't forget to let me know. While you're at it, feel free to leave a like to this video to support the drama house and please join me as we once again say happy 20th birthday to this legend. The Sims 2, you have aged like fine wine.